Let's take a closer look at the structure of a synovial joint. As I mentioned in describing synovial joints, the bones of a synovial joint are held together by a joint capsule. This joint capsule encloses the joint and it produces the synovial fluid. The joint capsule has two important parts. The outer fibrous layer of the joint capsule is made of dense connective tissue and it's continuous with the periosteum of the bone. So we have the periosteum around one bone that merges into the fibrous layer of the joint capsule, which then merges right into the periosteum of the next bone. This is what's actually holding things together. The inner part of the synovial membrane is a different type of tissue. The inner part of the synovial membrane is what's called a serous membrane. We have a layer of simple squamous epithelium held in place by a thin layer of areolar connective tissue, and that's going to be held to the inside of that fibrous layer. It's the epithelial cells of this inner synovial membrane that actually secrete the synovial fluid. They produce and release the slippery fluid that fills the inside of the joint capsule. Now, I don't want you to get the idea that there's like a big space between the bones or a whole lot of fluid building up there. Usually, it's only a very small space between the bones and they glide each other in just a very thin layer of the synovial fluid. The importance of the synovial fluid is that it's slippery and viscous like oil and it lubricates the joint and reduces friction to allow very smooth, easy movement of the two bones against each other. Another important component allowing the smooth movement is the articular cartilage. So remember that we have articular cartilage, a smooth hyaline cartilage on the ends of the bones where they're going to be articulating against each other. Typical articular cartilage is only about two millimeters thick, so it's not very thick, but that's enough to provide a good surface for articulation. With age or with disease or with arthritis, that articular cartilage can be worn away and get thinner and thinner. And when it's gone, the bones scrape against bone. That's not as smooth, that increases a lot of inflammation, and it's very uncomfortable. One of the things I want you to remember about cartilage is that it's can be difficult to get nutrients in and waste out because these materials have to diffuse through the rubbery matrix. The articular cartilage exchanges materials with the synovial fluid. That's how it gets its nutrients is from the synovial fluid. And the wastes are then going to be exchanged back into the synovial fluid. In order to maintain the health of the articular cartilage, we want to have a really good exchange of materials. And the best way to improve the exchange of materials in and out of the cartilage is by using the joints. Every time you move a joint, it compresses that articular cartilage, which helps the waste get pushed out. And when that pressure is released, it's almost like you can suck the nutrients from the synovial fluid back into the articular cartilage. So by actually moving joints, we exchange material better in the articular cartilage and we can improve the health of the joint. Those are the basic structures of a synovial joint. We have the bones with their articular cartilage, and then we have the joint capsule with its outer fibrous layer and inner synovial membrane to make the synovial fluid. But we have a lot of accessory structures associated with joints that help give them more stability or help improve their functioning. One accessory structure that we see in some joints is called an articular disc or a meniscus. And this is a pad of cartilage between the bones that helps to provide a little bit of shock absorption. This is important in areas where we see a lot of shock. So we have menisci or articular discs in the knees because they experience a lot of shock. So we can absorb a little bit of that shock and keep the two bones from banging against each other too much. Another important accessory structure in a joint is a ligament. A ligament is a band of dense, regular connective tissue that connects one bone to another bone. And it's going to be continuous with the periosteum around the bone. So we have periosteum around the bone, and then continuous with this is this band of dense, regular connective tissue that goes down and connects to the periosteum of the next bone. And remember that ligaments are very strong in one direction. So that's really going to provide stability to the joint. A similar structure is a tendon. A tendon is also a band 
of dense regular connective tissue that's going to merge right into the periosteum of a bone. But instead of connecting a bone to a bone, tendons connect a muscle to a bone. So this is how we can actually connect our muscles to the bones so that the muscles can contract and move the bones. In addition to being important for moving the bones, tendons can also provide stability to a joint. And we'll see a couple examples of that coming up. The last accessory structure I want to talk about is a bursa. A bursa is a sort of sac of synovial fluid. So it's got a fibrous outer layer and then synovial membrane inside to make synovial fluid. And this sac of synovial fluid helps to cushion specific areas of the joint. It might go between a tendon and a bone, or between a ligament and a bone, or it might go around a tendon, or it might go between muscles, anywhere that you need a little bit of extra cushioning in order to protect the joint or to allow the best movement of the joint. If you've ever heard of bursitis, bursitis is an inflammation of a bursa. So a shoulder is a common place for bursitis because we have a number of bursa here in the shoulder. And if one of them gets rubbed or inflamed, then it can swell and be painful. And every time you move it, and either a tendon or a ligament or some part of the joint rubs against that bursa, it's going to be uncomfortable.